The aim of cluster analysis is to classify the observations into distinct groups based on how similar their data are. However, when we have high dimensional data, that is, a data set with lots of variables or a data set with a very large number of observations, traditional clustering methods are extremely slow and may even crash your computer. To address this problem, GenStat offers an efficient clustering algorithm specifically designed to handle very large multivariate data sets. This algorithm exploits principal components to reduce the dimensions of the data. Additionally, it uses a specialized clustering method to reduce the heavy computational load when dealing with a large number of observations. To illustrate this, let's consider an example based on two principal components. GenStat's specialized clustering method divides the multidimensional space that was determined by the selected principal components into cells. The algorithm then tabulates the number of observations, i.e. units, in each cell. Next, the algorithm identifies a cell that contains a higher number of units than your pre-specified minimum number. This cell becomes the starting point for the first cluster. In this simple illustrative example, the minimum number of units has been set to 2. Neighbouring cells are added to the cluster if they contain more than the minimum number of units. The cluster is complete when no neighbouring cells around any cell already in the cluster have more units than this minimum number. The algorithm then looks for another cell not already in a cluster that contains more than the minimum number of units. This provides the starting point for another cluster. This process continues until all cells with more than the minimum number of units have been allocated to a cluster. To illustrate, let's open one of GenStat's example data sets. This data set contains 17 different morphometric measurements of size and shape information on more than 13,000 beans. Let's cluster the beans based on their morphometric data. First, open the Principal Components Cluster Analysis menu. To select all the variables for analysis, hold down the keyboard shift key, scroll to the bottom of the available data field, then click the last variable. Now click the arrow to move them into the Data to be Analyzed field. You'll recall that to reduce the dimensions of the data, the algorithm exploits principal components. Principal components analysis can be based on either the sums of squares and products matrix, the variance-covariance matrix, or the correlation matrix. The first two matrices essentially produce the same analysis. These matrices just differ by a scaling factor. Conversely, if the correlation matrix is used, each variant is standardized by subtracting its mean and dividing by its standard deviation. This standardization can be very useful when the variables aren't measured on the same scale or exhibit very different amounts of variation. In our example, the variables have been measured on very different scales, so I'll select this option to base the principal components analysis on the correlation matrix. The number of principal components to extract and subsequently use in the clustering is specified in the number of dimensions to use field. We need to extract at least two principal components, but no more than six. Our aim here is to use a small number of components, usually two or three, that capture most of the variation present in our data set. To decide how many components to use, you may want to perform a principal components analysis first and study the amount of variation successive components explain. For our data set, the first two principal components explain 55.47% and 26.43% of the variation in the data respectively, which is almost 82% of the total variation. So let's set the number of dimensions to use to 2. You'll also recall that the specialized clustering method partitions the multidimensional space defined by the principal components into cells. The number of cells is defined by both the number of dimensions to use and the number of partitions.
Leaving the number of partitions field set at the default of 10 with two dimensions results in 10 to the power of 2 cells, meaning 100 cells. Given we have such a large data set with over 13,000 observations, let's increase this number to 100. Clusters are formed by finding contiguous collections of cells where the number of observations within each cell exceeds the threshold set in the minimum number of units in cells field. Leaving this field blank will produce cluster solutions over a range of numbers. In practice, to find a good clustering solution, you'll probably need to fine-tune this by trying a range of values. However, the default values are a good place to start, so let's leave this field blank. In the Options menu, we can select what output to produce. We can display the latent roots, i.e. the eigenvalues, the loadings, that is the eigenvectors, and the scores from the principal components analysis. As we've already performed a principal components analysis, let's deselect all these options. For each clustering solution we generate using a different minimum number of units, we can display summary information about the clustering, a table showing how the cells are clustered, and a table giving the number of observations in each cell. The summary information is helpful for assessing which value for the minimum number of units produces the most optimal set of clusters, so let's display this. We can also produce various graphs, including a scatter plot of the principal component scores, plots illustrating the clustering of cells for each tested value of the minimum number of units, shade plots and histograms detailing the number of observations in each cell, and a line plot of the summary information from each tested value of the minimum number of units. The plots showing the clustering of cells are useful for assessing which minimum number of units gives a suitable clustering solution. So let's also display this and click OK. Clicking the Store button lets you save various results from your principal components clustering analysis. Simply select which results you want to save and type a meaningful name for each one. I don't need to save any results at the moment, so I'll leave everything unchecked and click OK to return to the main menu. Now we're ready to run our principal components clustering analysis. And here's our requested output. We have clustering information for a range of minimum number of units from 7 to 26. This table summarizes the number of clusters, the mean number of units within cells inside and outside the clusters, the mean number of units within cells just inside and just outside the cluster boundaries, the minimum number of units within cells on the cluster boundaries, and the maximum number of units within cells just outside the cluster boundaries. So here we can see that setting the minimum number of units within a cell to 21 produces 9 clusters. The mean unit count within clustered cells is 24.37, while the mean count of units outside of a cell cluster is 1.16 units. Cells just inside the boundary of a cluster contain on average 24.34 units, with a minimum of 21 units. Cells just outside the boundary of a cluster contain on average 14.79 units, with a maximum of 20 units. The graphs show us how clusters are created, disappear, or merge as we adjust the threshold for the minimum number of units within cells to cluster. In this example, setting the minimum number of units to 7 produced three main clusters containing lots of cells. However, there is also a scattering of clusters containing just a few cells. If we scroll back through the graphs, we can see how the clustering changes. When the minimum number of units is increased to 10, many of the small single-celled clusters have disappeared. Moreover, the large black cluster we saw when the minimum number of units was set to 7 has now split in two, which looks sensible. So this appears to be a good clustering solution. Even so, let's scroll through our other clustering solutions. Increasing the minimum number of units to 15 or higher is clearly too much. Notice that many of the cells are disappearing. This is because they contain less than the threshold number of units and thus haven't been assigned to any cluster.
For this data set, when using two principal components and 100 partitions per component, clustering the observations based on a minimum of 10 units per cell produces a good clustering solution. However, you may also want to look at the solution with the minimum number of units set to 9 or 11. Setting the minimum number of units to 11 also produces a nice looking result. But 9 produces too many single cell clusters. If you want to learn more about the different clustering methods available in GenStat, you can find many more examples in the Multivariate Analysis Guide.